I would now request Mr. Anshul Gupta, CEO PGI Group and Treasurer, BMR, UAE, to deliver his speech on Indian non-ferrous scrap import. Mr. Anshul Gupta started his professional career with AAREL Group as a commercial manager in 1998. Later, with his interest to start and own business, he formed PGI Group in 1999 as a startup entity, Pan Gulf International General Trading, LLC, and grew it to leading group in Middle East Asia. After successful development and establishment of PGI Group in various parts of the world, today he's also giving his valuable services as a treasurer of Bureau of Middle East Recycling, BMR. Please welcome Mr. Gupta with a warm round of applause. To have uh, all the industrialists and users, uh, metal organizations on one platform, meeting each other, trying to find out all the possibilities of working together. So I, I, I wish you have a nice successful event ahead also. Good afternoon to all friends who are part of this recycling chain and metal business directly and indirectly. First of all, I'd like to give a brief introduction of PGI Group. I promise you it won't be very long. PGI was established 17 years back in year 99. It was a humble start with a small yard. And presently we have a workforce of 250 people handling around 150,000 tons of non-ferrous at various places. So these are some of the places we are, where we are working. We have certain facilities outside UAE also. This is our UAE facility where we are recycling and handling the scrap cargoes. This is our Thailand facility. I'd like to start my presentation with a visit to one of the biggest scrap yards of India. Mayapuri. Mayapuri is located in West Delhi. Mayapuri is one of the biggest scrapyards of Asia. Mayapuri gives livelihood to thousands of people in form of traders, scrap dealers, mechanics, laborers, transporters, government officials, etc. There was a tragic incident in the year 2010 in Mayapuri when a radiation-containing piece of metal was disposed of to one of the metal scrap dealers based in Mayapuri. Due to lack of radiation checking equipments, this particular piece was not detected. And this caused a huge damage to several people, and one of the person even lost his life. This has become a very big concern for all of us on media also. Now let's walk through several of the scrapyards from various parts of the world, various corners of the world. I, I tried to gather photographs from US, Canada, Middle East, even North Southeast Asia. Let's go through these yards.
My friends, it is really high time to update and upgrade ourselves. In spite of India being fourth largest importer of scrap, we lack in professionalism and infrastructure. With population of 1.25 billion people, we still have very few professional processing and handling yards, which we can count on our tips. Scrap collection and recycling in India is unorganized and lacks professional approach. We Indians, we had so many Fortune 500 companies, Microsoft, Google, PepsiCo, and so on. But why we cannot do scrap recycling in a professional, safer, and organized way and make recycling as a real industry? Let's see highlights of scrap business in India. Very obvious, most of the scrap dealers, they still prefer doing cash business. They prefer cash transactions. They procure and collect small and medium-sized quantities from all over India, and then they process it manually. Volumes are very much limited, and there's hardly any investment in modern machines and equipments. As this sector is not professional, they hardly maintain any accounts, any book of accounts, or balance sheets. So if you don't have any strong balance sheet with strong business fundamental, then most of the Indian bankers would not like to fund you as this is a scrap business. Most of the government, government officials, bankers, and public in general, and in fact, many of my relatives and friends still think scrap is a bangar business in India. But my friends, we are a vital link in the society who endeavor to collect, process, and recycle all the trash generated by all of us. We have to recognize scrap as an industry, and one of the most important services to the society, which, which is helping by keeping the landfills under control. So I just pointed out all the highlights, and I just want to make a very bold statement that the best gift for all the metal traders, scrap traders present here, the best gift we can give to a child is education and a strong balance sheet, a strong company. If you leave behind a stockpile of cash for your son or your daughter, it might go down and drain in no time. But with a strong and professional run business, our child can have a growth, prosperity for lifetime. <laughs> Policies and reforms in India recently, uh, two years back, the new government has come up and we can see a lot of reforms and policy measures being taken. Uh, we are all aware, certain steps i like to highlight in front of you all. We are all aware that Indian government has taken various steps to curb cash transactions. Any cash transaction up, over and above certain limit is highlighted. You have to give your ID cards or Aadhaar card, which is a very good thing. All efforts are made by the government to bring back the black money, which is abroad. Tax regime is transforming to make transparency due to digitalization. Making whole country as one common market by introduction of GST was one of the bold steps which was long awaited. Make in India, Made in India Drive has really made Indians proud, not only here, but abroad also. Investment in infrastructure can be seen with new roads, airports, and seaports coming up swiftly. Swachh Bharat Mission is a campaign which should have been started in 1947, but nevertheless, it has been taken up to the highest level. Now let's see the scrap figures the non-ferrous scrap in particular. These are the projections for last, uh, for next 10 years. In 2015, non-ferrous scrap generation in India was 1.4 million tons with a breakup of old and new scrap, 0 0.8 million tons and 0 0.6 million tons. 2020, with a cumulative annual growth rate of 14%, this will go up to 2.9 million tons. And 2025, this figure will further jump to 5.5 million tons. Now see the, let's see the non-ferrous scrap demand. Demand is 2.8 million tons. It was in 2015. 2020, we see the figure zooming up to 5.2 million tons, almost double. And 2025, it's further double to 8.6 million tons. Now let's put both the slides together. You can see which one is taller. Obviously the dark blue which means the demand is 
easily surpassing the supply or scrap generation in India. So how do we fill this gap? These are the data of the scrap being imported, particularly non-ferrous scrap, which I've highlighted here. In 2015 and 16, copper was 1,81,000. I'm using lakh because in India, everyone uses lakhs, lakhs instead of millions. Aluminium, 8,67,000 metric tons was imported. Zinc, 58,000 tons. Lead, 58,000 tons. And nickel and other waste, 2,000 tons. Overall, 11,69,000 11, metric tons of non-ferrous scrap was imported in India. Let's see the duty structure. How much duty we Indians are paying for importing the scrap as compared to the rest of the Asia. I've taken the figures of not only developed economies of Asia, which we always say, no, it's a developed economy, so they can afford to pay zero tax. But I've compared with all the small economies, which are even smaller than Indian economies. So India, in copper, we are paying 5% import duty, aluminum 2.5%, brass 2.5%, zinc 5%, iron 2.5%. Let's move to the right. Thailand, zero. Malaysia, zero. Indonesia, zero. Sri Lanka, which is a very small economy, still zero. So India is the only economy in the world, or maybe in Asia, which is charging import duty of 5 to 2.5% on import of non-ferrous scrap. Now, why do we use scrap? Why not we use primaries? Though I'm not a critic of primaries, each thing has their own space, own utility, own importance. But just to see the figures and facts in front of us, you can see to produce a one kilo of aluminum from scrap recycling, I generate only 1.7 kilograms of carbon dioxide, CO2. While if I produce from bauxite, I have to almost get 11.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide. It's very much evident, even a, even a kid can say by seeing the slide that, Dad, please save my future. Let's start recycling. Let's start reusing. Let's not only dump them in the landfills. What is lacking in India? Recognition from the government, officials, bankers, that scrap is an industry, because scrap is still an unorganized sector in a country. Removing of scrap duty on import of scrap, as it is a raw material which would help us in reducing the carbon emission, which I've showed you in pre previous slide, and also controlling the cost. Implementation of carbon credit policy to benefit smelters who encourage recycling. So these policies should be implemented in a firmer way so we can promote recycling in a country. More reforms by, in procedures by the government for risk management by allowing the companies to hedge their metal exposure in US dollars should be made easy for them. Bank financing at a preferential rates should be provided for making capital expenditure in recycling projects like e-waste, electronic waste, which is going to be a big problem in coming times. Auto shredding, it's a new project. As you must have heard, we have to scrap the cars after 15 years. So each state is trying to implement these policies after Supreme Court order, court order. And also converting garbage to power. Several pilot projects have come up in India in which they're converting the garbage, they're burning it, incinerating it, and generating power. We also urge the government to develop SEZs, rules and regulations, which are not only harmonized, but keeping in mind the practicalities of scrap recycling industry. Government should also encourage investment and create awareness in recycling sector by such conferences like this one. With this note, I'd like to end my presentation. And I just want to stress on one very important thing. Let us update and upgrade ourselves. We being Indian and staying in uh, abroad, running scrapyards, it would have been a big opportunity for all of us if the reforms are implemented and we can even open a proper scrapyard, a recycling facility in our own country, in our own homeland. This is, that is my real dream. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yes, sir, how can I help you? Sir, you have shown uh, the scrapyard of Mayapuri, which is not the scrapyard of Mayapuri, there is a small vendor. And Dubai also, you are comparing the industries. You, you can't compare a scrapyard dealer, very small dealer, to the Dubai people. 
you go to Fridabad and Gurgaon and very big scrap yard there. But sir, my point is not to compare or uh, demotivate India. Being a, I am an Indian also. You can't tell that ki in India the working system is very poor. Now you see the scrap yard in North India and another thing. They are very this thing and they are the manufacturers. And by here the, they are the traders. Sir, can I know your name please? Can I know your good name please? Uh, Rajat sir, I think he didn't want to degrade or he didn't want to say anything about Indian facilities. No, no, he was just trying to compare. I think am I right? Am I right? Because Indian facilities are better than Indian facilities. 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 There are 20 units are there. If you show any units, they are more special than. Sir, I think none of us can sit for two hours and see all those 20 units. Our point is not to see the units. We all are here because we understand the potential in India. Otherwise, we wouldn't have come here. Apart from being an Indian, we know the second biggest market after China is India for us. It's unignorable for all of us. But the point to prove is that we have a hidden potential which are not which which we are not tapping. I opened a scrap yard in Gandhi Dam. I'm. Rajesh ji, if you can hear me out, would be much better for all of us. I opened a scrap yard. I like to share my experience with you in Gandhi Dam. So I'm going through that pain process. I opened it in 2014 after getting all the sanctions, paperwork done. 2015 we start running it. We could not compete because of cash business, and our organization does not run on cash business. We had to face a lot of internal competition and all this. Due to GST, we could not grow. Due to lack of various facilities, infrastructure. So the idea is not to demotivate my own country. I am Indian. First, foremost, for me is Indian is the first thought for us. But the thing is, I can see potential in my country. So why not tap it? We are investing money outside. Why should not I invest money in my own country? That is my that is my main point. And I want to encourage all the entrepreneurs here to invest more in machines. We are ready to stand by it. And then let's grow our recycling industry. Why outside India only? Thank you so much.